So, you're ready to be energy independent and build a fully solar powered home. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you about the four key components that you need to build a truly self-sufficient solar powered home. The smarter way to go solar. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past 13 years, I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, in today's video, we're answering the question, how to fully solar power your home. Now, the first main component you need, of course, is your solar panel array. Uh, your solar panel array is a collection of solar panels that will allow you to harvest energy from the sun and turn that into usable electricity for your home. But every home's electricity and energy usage profile is different. So when you first go into designing your solar power system, typically the first thing you wanna look at is what has been your historic energy usage. Now, most electric companies will actually provide this to you on your electric bill, where you can see a historical chart of the previous 12 or 13 months, so you can see over the course of the entire year how much energy your home has been consuming. Now, this is important because when you look at a solar power system, the solar power system will have a, a power rating in watts, and that's basically telling you what's, what's the maximum instantaneous power that that solar power system can generate, but that's not the whole picture. What you really wanna consider is how much total energy will the solar system produce over the course of the entire year? And that's gonna be measured in kilowatt hours, KWH not watts or kilowatts. Now, in order to determine how much energy that solar power system is going to produce, you have to look at the equipment being used, i.e. The, the size of the solar panel array, but you also have to consider the orientation, which angle and which direction are those solar panels going to be facing. Of course, we also have to factor in what the irradiance is at your location. Uh, certain parts of the country receive much more sunlight. For example, if you live in a place like Arizona or New Mexico or Texas, you're gonna get a lot more sunlight throughout the year than somebody with the same solar power system who lives in Chicago. So we have to look at the irradiance in your area. Uh, and, and of course, we also have to consider a shading analysis of the property. Uh, depending on where you live and how your, your terrain is laid out, there could be portions of your roof that receive shade during certain parts of the day. Uh, you might have a tree that's nearby the house that casts a shadow on, on part of the roof during certain parts of the day. So all that's gonna be factored in to designing the correct size solar panel array. Uh, and again, the, the key number here is not what is your power rating in watts, what's your, what, what is your instant max power? The key figure here is what is the total energy production or the, what is the total energy harvest of the system over the entire annual cycle? And we wanna be able to match that up to what your home's historical energy consumption has been. All right, the second major factor is you want to enroll in a solar buyback program or sometimes called a net metering program. Now, when we talk about a net metering program, basically what we're talking about is your relationship with the power company becomes a two-way relationship. Uh, during daylight hours, you can power the home directly with solar power, and then all of the excess solar can be sent back to the power company, earning you credits on your account. So that then during the evening hours, when the solar panels are no longer producing, you can pull energy in using the credits that you built during daytime hours. Uh, and this works great if you live in a place that offers a, a true one-for-one -one net metering program. So for every one unit of energy you send them during the day, you can pull it back at night and there's no penalty. But what we've been seeing over the past few years here, especially led by California with this new NEM 3.0, is that many of the utilities are not willing to offer you a true one-for-one -one buyback anymore. In fact, in many places in California now, you have to send them four, five, or six kilowatt hours for during the daytime for every one that you get to pull back, which means that you're not gonna get that same energy offset or that same dollar-for-dollar -dollar payback on your solar unless you install battery storage. And that brings me to point number three is battery storage coupled with your solar power system. And that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, Schneider Electric and the new Schneider Home. If you're a contractor or electrician considering which solar and energy management system to offer, then you need to take a look at the new Schneider Home. The Schneider Home provides an all-in-one solution for solar, storage, EV charging, and intelligent load control. 
The integrated design reduces the total number of components, allowing you to dramatically lower material and labor cost. Schneider Home uses equipment that contractors and electricians already know, like the Square-D QO plug-on neutral load center. For over 100 years, Schneider has been helping factories and office buildings optimize energy, and now this technology is available for U.S. homes. Schneider Home is the perfect solution for new construction homes or those needing a main panel upgrade. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can go directly to the Schneider Home commercial website or click the link in the description below so you can sign up to be a certified installer right away. Thank you Schneider Electric for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, when you add battery storage coupled with your solar power system, you get three major advantages. The first is you can now self-consume your solar energy 24 hours a day. So what I mean by that is, when you have excess solar power available during daylight hours, instead of having to try to sell it back to the power company, where you may or may not get full price credit for what you send them, you can just take all of your excess solar generation and charge it into a battery. Then during the evening hours, when the solar panels are no longer producing, you just power the house off the battery. This way, you're more self-sufficient and self-contained you can be running off of solar power pretty much 24 hours a day uh, by self-consuming from the battery during evening hours. Now again, th this protects you from the loss of a net metering program. You don't have to worry about all this buying and selling and trading back and forth with the power company. You just consume the energy yourself first. You still have a connection to the power company, so if, if for some reason the battery drains out overnight and you still want to consume more energy in the house, you still have that connection to the power company. You can pull more in, but you, you're pretty much using them as the, the energy provider of last resort. Of course, the other advantage with having batteries coupled with your solar system is having secure emergency backup power. Uh, if the electric grid were to go down, you would still have the ability to directly power your home using solar power during daylight hours, you would charge any of your excess into the battery and then be able to run the home off the battery during the evening hours. And then the next day, the solar panels would take over and recharge the battery. And you could repeat that cycle days, weeks, or even months at a time, even during a grid blackout. And then of course, the third major benefit of having battery attached to your solar system is time of use avoidance. Now, for those of you who live in places like California or Arizona, you know what I'm talking about when I, when I talk about time of use avoidance. Th there are certain hours of the day when you have to pay a much higher rate of electricity. Typically, this is gonna be late afternoon, early evening hours when the, it's the hottest part of the day, the air conditioners are working the hardest, people are starting to get home from work, they're plugging in their vehicles, they're cooking dinner. And so since demand on the grid is highest during those hours, many utilities will charge you a higher rate of electricity during those hours. So if you have battery attached to your solar, uh, even if your solar panels may not be producing very much during those peak hours, you can run the house off the battery to avoid having to buy anything from the power company during those peak hours, and then just recharge the battery after midnight or whenever the rates go down, uh, or just wait till the next day and let the solar panels recharge the battery for you. And then finally, number four is you're gonna want to incorporate some sort of intelligent load control. Now, when we talk about intelligent load control, what we mean is the ability for the system to turn certain appliances or certain circuits in your home on or off based on what the energy situation is. And that energy situation could include uh, how much power is available from solar, how much is the battery charged, what's the battery state of charge. Uh, also, what is the time of day? Again, if you live in a time of use market where you have certain on-peak hours where you want to avoid buying from the power company during those peak hours, th that may factor in as well to whether or not you allow certain appliances to run. Uh, and typically, it's going to be your heaviest load appliances that need to be managed things like air conditioning compressors, uh, water heaters, electric clothes dryers, uh, and especially electric vehicle chargers, which can consume a lot of energy depending on how much you commute. And so managing when those things are allowed to run can help put you in better control of your home's energy situation. You know, my, my goal with all these videos, guys, is, is really to help you all that are looking to achieve true energy independence. It doesn't mean that you have to disconnect from the power grid. In fact, in, in almost all cases, if you already have power lines run to your home, it doesn't really do you any good to just cut the lines or not use them. But basically, I wanna get you into a position where you can take or leave the power company 
on your own terms. You know, if you want to generate enough energy to provide for your home's needs, be able to self-consume that energy from a battery storage system during evening hours, and, and really just, you know, use the power company as the energy provider of last resort only. That way it gives you control of your, your energy cost and finances, as well as sets you up to be prepared in the unlikely event of a loss of the electric grid. So this has been a discussion on how to fully solar power your home. Uh, folks, as always, if you get good value from these videos you see on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Uh, and also go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way as we have new videos coming out, it'll come up on your recommendations and you can stay up to date with everything. Now, of course, if you're a homeowner and you're in the process of looking at different solar and battery storage options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe if you already have a price quote and you wanna get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the best equipment and the best deal, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. Set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the free online calculator tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the solar surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.